go ahead and do something interesting. Let's quickly do an nmap scan on this network. Right, so nmap is actually starting up. And let's go back to our Wireshark interface. And if you actually see, we are seeing a lot of activity. Right, so nmap is actually conducting a port scan. Let's just stop nmap. Okay, nmap is already done and it's able to enumerate some services, right? But let's kind of just scroll up and see what really happened here. Right, so basically we started up nmap and nmap is now going ahead and finding out which ports are open, which ports are closed, so on and so forth. So nmap seems to be using the SYN scan, right? So as you can see, there is a SYN packet which is going from 131.128, which is nothing but this interface to the 131.1 interface. And a SYN packet has been sent. Let's look at how this packet looks like, right? First is of course, once again, we have the ethernet header then we have the IP header as we discussed previously, but now we have the TCP header in which the source port, destination port, all these things are there. And if you look, the flag is set to SYN, right? So Nmap is actually going ahead and scanning all these ports, right? If you notice, for example, here, you know, something has been sent to the FTP port. Here it's the HTTPS port and the P2P. So Nmap is actually sending out probe requests to all these well-known ports and trying to find out if those ports are open or not, right? So there's a huge, you know, number of it. And now let's try and see whether we can shorten the list. So if you notice, Nmap has found that port number 80 is open. So let's go ahead and just view the traffic for port number 80. How do we do that? So one easy way is to just open up Wireshark. Let's say we select the destination port field right and right click and if you look at it we have an apply as filter and we can just say select it so what actually happens is now whenever the tcp destination port is 40740 we are going to just view all those packets if you look here we have something called p that is the number of packets which have been captured and d which is the one which have been displayed right so, you know, so many packets. So, let's try and just have a look at packets for the port number HTTP. And if you notice, we are seeing two packets. Now, the point to note is that currently we have tcp.dst port. But in order to view traffic for a port, we need both the packets which are addressed to that port and addressed from that port. So, one thing which we can do is just change the display filter to tcp.port and go ahead and press enter. So now we can see three packets, right? And if you notice what has happened is Nmap sent out a SYN packet to the HTTP port. Because the port was open, the port responded back with a SYN act and of course Nmap went ahead and closed the port by sending out a reset. Mostly the stack of the hosting computer of Nmap sends this reset. But anyway, so what we have here is a very different sequence in which the open port is sending out a SYN act packet in order to say that yes I am open. So in this way we can go ahead and do a logical analysis of how Nmap found out which one of these ports are open. Now if you notice, let's try port 25 which is SMTP. And in case of SMTP, Nmap sent out the SYN but because the port was closed on the remote computer we received a reset, right? Now let's try one of these other ports, let's say port number 135, right? And now once again we have the familiar SYN, then we have the SYNAC and then finally the reset. So using Wireshark it is also possible to peer into what's happening to the network and try and deduce how some of these tools are working. In a later tutorial we'll talk about reverse engineering of network applications using Wireshark. So now coming back to Wireshark, how can we go ahead and add as many display filters as possible? So first let's go ahead and clear the whole expression so that we get the entire dump. Now one way to do it is to click on the expression field also. Right? 
so now here you have a listing by protocols and you know what sort of a filtering that protocol will support so let's just scroll down and once again get back to tcp right so now if you notice you have the tcp source port dot src port dot destination port and so on and so forth right so now we can play around with some of these parameters for example let's say tcp dot port the filter which you just applied we can actually click on the equal to here relation and just say we want to see for port number 80 right and click ok and then go ahead and apply this filter expression so once again we come back to our familiar sin synac and research sequence which nmap used to find out that this port is actually open so this is something which is very interesting 